Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Ultima Thule. What do you think it is? Well, as you can probably tell from the title, it is the next destination for the uh, infamous mission that started back uh, several years ago and has reached Pluto back in 2015. This is the object we're going to be talking about, it's coming into our view very slowly and welcome to What The Math. So as you can probably tell from the title, Ultima Thule is actually the new official name for 2014 MU69. Now, this particular object, uh, more commonly known as a minor planet, is actually, uh, well, first of all, it's really beautiful. Let's actually try to take a look at it in a little bit more detail and maybe even land on it, because I think it is definitely probably the best um, simulation you can find of this particular object out there. Anyway, so this object is uh, basically the next destination for the New Horizons mission that is going to uh, be passing by relatively close to this rock, I guess, um, exactly on January 1st of 2019. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to be the news, you're probably going to be uh, hearing about it quite a lot because we're going to be transmitting quite a lot of photos of this very, very cool looking rock. Now, there is one difference between this particular simulation and what may be actual real life representation of this, and that's, of course, the color. We now know uh, almost for sure that this is actually much darker and also red. Unfortunately, I can't really make this red here, so we're just going to have to leave it as it is. Uh, so this is actually the farthest and the smallest object we were able to measure in terms of color. And interestingly, um, it's just like Pluto has a lot of red on it. Now, uh, if you have watched previous videos and if you know a little bit about chemistry, you may know that it's actually the methane and the uh, interaction of methane and various other uh, carbon compounds with the stellar, uh, or I guess solar radiation in this case, that turns things red on the surface. And the more they're exposed to the sun, the more red they become. So we know that this is a pretty ancient object that has been exposed to the sun for a very, very long time. Um, now, what is interesting about this particular rock is that we now think it's also, uh, it basically it's made up of two pieces. Um, either very, very, very close binary asteroids that have basically become attached, or maybe just one long piece like you see right here. Now, um, it is spinning and it's going to be spinning even faster with time because of the solar pressure. This is actually something I've talked about in one of the previous videos. It's known as the Yarkovsky effect. It is essentially being accelerated by the solar radiation and will most likely spin faster and faster until these two pieces will basically fly apart. And it will most likely become a binary asteroid or binary uh, minor body. Now. Let's actually land on it, and this is probably going to be one of the first landings you'll ever experience on this particular object. If we ever make it here in real life, it will be probably much more fun, much more realistic, but this is essentially what it would feel like to stand on top of this rock. You can actually experience this yourself if you get Space Engine, a totally free simulation um, that you can find online. But anyway, so this is what this rock looks like. Um, it actually is not very big, it's only about... Um, I think it's total like 40 kilometers in diameter. And uh, in terms of size, it's, it's sort of comparable to a very, very large city. Um, in terms of mass though, it is pretty, pretty massive. Definitely massive enough to cause serious damage if it ever crashed into our own earth. Now, what else do we know about this? Well, for one, we were actually wondering if uh, there were any debris and additional moons orbiting around this rock. Um, since we're going to be passing relatively close to it. As a matter of fact, the distance at which New Horizons is going to fly past this object is going to be... I'm going to show it to you in a second. We're going to move to a distance of approximately 3,000 kilometers. So this is basically how close it will pass to it. Now, it does look pretty far, but remember, uh, New Horizons has a pretty powerful lens, so it can actually see the rock pretty clearly and have a resolution of about 30 meters per pixel, which is actually pretty high. And so it will look something like this when we take photos. Um, 
but even at this distance it might have moons and debris and pieces of rock flying around because its hill sphere or basically its um, orbital sphere is about 75,000 kilometers so in this particular region it might actually have quite a lot of stuff orbiting around it and so we were afraid that maybe just maybe New Horizons will smack into something so for the past year or so, the scientists back on Earth, let's actually go to Earth for a second, have been trying to discover if um, this rock does have some weird stuff orbiting around it and if we have to be aware of it. Now this is actually really interesting, this is how we've been doing it. We basically take a very large, very very large uh, airplane with a telescope and we go into a location where we think this particular um, object which i'm going to point at right now again let's find it in the space engine uh where this object is actually going to basically cast a shadow by passing in front of a star far far away now that uh, just think about how ridiculous this is this is actually super super complicated we're literally looking for this tiny tiny rock that's very small in comparison to everything else in our solar system and we're waiting for it to pass in front of a star so it casts a shadow. And when it does, we can actually see other objects in its vicinity, including some of the debris that might be there. And right now I'm going to see if I can actually simulate this. So you'll notice how if I accelerate time, it's going to start moving across the skies. Now let's see if it actually passes in front of any stars. Now, we predicted three of these in 2018, and there were a few of these in 2017 and also 2016, but we haven't really been successful at, at seeing much because we've been making mistakes at where we thought it was going to be. So it clearly didn't pass in front of this star. Maybe it will hit this one, but probably not. Um, and uh, the only one we've been actually kind of been partially successful with, I'm going to show it to you in a second, was back in 2016. It actually did pass and uh, in front of a star and we were able to use that to kind of see some of the parameters and you would be surprised how much we can actually discover about this object by just observing one such passage. So here is actually the uh, actual image or uh, I guess a collection of images of this passage from 2017 I believe, this was back in July, just watch. There it is. That's it. That's all. That's all we're looking for. But this was enough for the scientists to discover that this is a binary object, or it basically has two big parts. That it doesn't seem to have a lot of things around it. Uh, it probably doesn't have a moon. And basically, this little blip right there was enough for scientists to really just uh, have an entire analysis of what we know and what we've discovered about um, the object currently known as Ultima Thule. Now, what exactly is Ultima Thule? Well, that's actually um, a pretty interesting, I guess, idea and a pretty interesting name. Okay, I don't think it's going to pass the Brown Radio Stars. And Ultima Thule basically means uh, the world beyond any known uh, border, or basically the ultimate world of unknown. And this is exactly kind of what, how we think about this unusual world, the first such rock to be visited by a spacecraft far, far away at a distance of about 43 and a half astronomical units. That's about 43 and a half times the distance of Earth uh, to the Sun. Now, interestingly, this name actually was pretty popular, so it, it was voted on. People have selected this name over other names, but <laughs> what is really funny is that the second contender, uh, and this is where it kind of gets a little bit cheesy, but yeah, the second contender for basically the most popular name was actually uh, tiramisu. That, that's right. People were going to name this after their favorite cake. And uh, I actually think it was a pretty good name, but uh, maybe not the most appropriate name for the most distant object we've ever visited by a spacecraft. Well, anyway, so we'll definitely be talking more about uh, Ultima Thule as we discover more and more things about it. But I just kind of wanted to uh, bring this to your attention, mostly because now we're definitely getting excited about this mission. And because we now have a really cool name for this object. I think it's actually probably one of the coolest names out there. Ultima Thule, I just say it, you know, it sounds really powerful and stuff. And uh, this is essentially going to be a new um, frontier for human exploration and most likely inspire a new generation of scientists and astronomers to study the worlds uh, beyond Earth. This is Ultima Thule, also known as 2014 MU69, and that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. 
thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys tomorrow come back tomorrow to learn something else let's end this video on making this object spin really really fast and basically escaping from it really really slowly space out and as always bye bye